welcome to hamad biology online lecture room my name is hamad ahmed jan lecture in botany kotaba university of science and information technology peshawar campus hyderabad peshawar in this video lecture we will discuss metabolism of virus infected plants but first metabolism of virus infected plants many earlier workers described differences in composition or in rate of some processes between healthy and virus infected tissues aspects commonly investigated were total carbohydrates and sugars total nitrogen and various nitrogen fractions the carbon nitrogen ratio total ash are various ash components and rates of photosynthesis respiration and transpiration estimation were often made on fractions containing many different compounds such as soluble nitrogen most analytical work has been carried out on fully infected plants perhaps many weeks after inoculation in such plants we may well expect to observe changes in the amounts of many substances and in the rates of major biochemical processes nucleic acids dna it is widely assumed that the small rna viruses have little effect on host cell dna synthesis virus infection may well have some effect on host cell dna synthesis but such effects are likely to be fairly small and difficult to establish because number 1 dna content per cell may increase for some time in a normal expanding leaf number 2 minor dna fractions which might be affected by virus infection may be difficult to isolate and identify and number 3 any effect might be very transitory and therefore difficult to detect in asynchronous infections ribosomes and ribosomal rna effects of virus infection on ribosomal rna synthesis and the concentration of ribosomes may differ with the virus Vi strains of virus time after infection and the host and tissue concern in addition to these 70s and 80s ribosomes may be affected differently for example in tmv infected leaves viral rna may come to represent about 75% of the total nucleic acids without having any marked effects on the main host rna fractions except to cause a reduction in 16s and 23s chloroplast ribosomal rnas however under some conditions cytoplasmic ribosomal rna synthesis is inhibited too a reduction in chloroplast ribosomes without a marked effect on cytoplasmic ribosomes is a fairly common feature for mosaic diseases proteins the coat protein of a virus such as tmv can come to represent about half the total protein in the diseased leaf this can occur without marked effect on the overall content of host proteins most other viruses multiply to a much more limited extent from tmv 
Effects on host protein synthesis are not necessarily correlated with amounts of virus produced. A reduction in the amount of the most abundant host protein ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase and oxygenase is one of the commonest effects of viruses that cause mosaic and yellowing diseases. Fresser 1987 established that TMV infection reduced host protein synthesis by up to 75% during the period of virus replication. Infection did not alter the concentration of host polyadenylated RNA or its size distribution. This suggests that infection may alter host protein synthesis at the translation stage rather than interfering with transcription. Stratford and Covey 1988 found that there were changes in the levels of specific translatable mRNAs in response to infection of turnip leaves mosaic virus. More such changes were found with a severe strains. Lipids the sites of virus synthesis within the cell almost always contain membrane structures like chloroplast, mitochondria, etc. TYMV infections alters the ultrastructure of chloroplast membranes and rhabdovirus and tospovirus particles obtain their outermost membranes by budding through some host cell membrane. There have been a few studies of the effects of virus infection on lipid metabolism, but none of these has illuminated the mechanism by which viruses change and use plant membrane systems. Carbohydrate some viruses appear to have little effect on carbohydrates in the leaves, while others may alter both their rate of synthesis and rate of translocation. These changes may be illustrated in a simple manner. Leaves that have been inoculated several days previously with a virus that does not cause necrotic local lesions are harvested in the morning or after some hours in darkness decolorized and treated with iodine the local lesion may show up as dark staining areas against a pale background indicating a black block in carbohydrates translocation. On the other hand, if the inoculated leaves are harvested in the afternoon after a period of photosynthesis, decolorized and stained with iodine, the local lesions may show up as pale spots against the dark staining background of uninfected tissue. Thus virus infection can decrease the rate of accumulation of starch when leaves are exposed to light. Infection of cartilidins of Cucurbita people with CMV results in the formation of these starch lesions. T. C. et al. 1994 examined the distribution of virus across such lesions by immunolocalization 
and correlated this with starch accumulation using carbon dioxide 14 assimilation and chlorophyll a quenching this analysis revealed an arrangement of cell types with diverse physiology that was complex both spatially and temporally from the few diseases that have been examined in any retail it is not possible to make very firmly based generalizations about other carbohydrate changes but the following may be fairly common effects a raise in glucose fructose and sucrose in virus infected leaves a greater rise in these sugars caused by mild strains of a given virus compared with severe strains further effects of infection on mesophyll cells not yet understood may reduce translocation of carbohydrates out of the leaves thank you for watching the video